Welcome to Professionalism and Customer Service in the Healthcare Environment, Conflict Resolution. This is Lecture A, Definitions of Conflict. The objectives for this lecture are to define conflict, describe historical views of conflict, and identify ways in which conflict can be both a positive and negative force for group performance. A variety of definitions and meanings are associated with the concept of conflict. However, in general, there are two conditions and themes associated with it. First, conflict must be perceived by the individuals who are party to it. If conflict is not perceived by those individuals, then a situation won't be viewed as a conflicting one, although others who are associated with the situation may well see it as such. Second, conflict almost always entails social interactions combined with some level of disagreement and an inability to get along. There's a saying, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. In other words, you can't find a solution without resolving the associated issues. Conflict is a naturally occurring phenomenon resulting from intended human interaction. However, conflict in the context of healthcare services delivery can easily affect patient safety and quality of care. The prevalence of unresolved conflict in this environment can be due to poor communications, conflict avoidance, and poor working relationships. All members of the healthcare team, including IT staff, must acquire and exercise effective skills in conflict management, which is covered in the next lecture. Healthcare workplaces are considered high conflict environments. Some of the factors that lead to high conflict in healthcare settings include high levels of stress and emotion, limited resources such as staff and budgets, intense competition, mergers and acquisitions, heavy regulation at federal, state, local, and industry levels, and demands of numerous stakeholders, such as clinical staff, administrators and executives, IT personnel, and auxiliary members of the healthcare team. Diversity, while a strength, can sometimes contribute to conflict due to lack of mutual understanding. How individuals and organizations view conflict has evolved since the early 1930s through three distinct phases or views. These are the traditional view, the human relations view, and the interactionist view. Let's look at each of these more closely. The traditional view existed during the 1930s and 40s and saw conflict as being destructive and something to be avoided. Conflict was associated with violence, destruction, and irrationality in order to emphasize its harmful implications. Conflict was viewed as deriving from an absence of trust, poor communication, and the inability of managers to be responsive to their employees' needs. Although this traditional view of conflict is old-fashioned, many people continue to think of conflict according to this outdated view. In contrast, the human relations view suggested that conflict was an unavoidable and normal part of all groups and workplaces. As such, it could not be eradicated and could actually be helpful in improving group performance. Workplaces, according to this view, might become so accommodating and agreeable that they could become stagnant and indifferent to required change and innovation. This theory of conflict was popular from the 1940s through the 1970s. Finally, we come to the interactionist view of conflict, which not only accepts conflict as an inevitable part of groups and work environments, but also is supportive of a continuing nominal amount of conflict to keep work groups self-critical, inventive, and imaginative. Although the interactionist view proposes that certain types of conflict support group goals and performance, it doesn't suggest that all conflict is good. Those types of conflicts that lead to improved group functioning and support group goals are positive or constructive forms of conflict. Alternatively, those forms of conflict that obstruct group goals or performance can be considered destructive or negative forms of conflict. Positive or constructive conflict can serve as a catalyst for positive change. It can lead to inspired and improved problem solving, higher commitment and motivation, better work products, and higher job satisfaction. Negative or dysfunctional conflict can act as an opposing force by sidetracking efforts to achieve group goals and reducing performance. It can also reduce employees' sense of well-being. If the conflict is sufficiently severe, it can lead to employee resentment and anxiety, which can result in poor work outcomes and stress. Rampant negative conflict can result in cultures that do not uphold helpful and trusting interpersonal relationships. Such cultures, when present in healthcare settings, can be detrimental to patients. 
What are the various types of conflict? To assist us in differentiating useful or positive conflict from dysfunctional or negative conflict, let's break down conflict into three categories. Relationship conflict, process conflict, and task conflict. Relationship conflict relates to interpersonal relationships. Process conflict occurs in reaction to how work is carried out. Task conflict occurs around the content and the objectives of work. Research shows that relationship conflicts are commonly negative. Such conflicts occur because of personality clashes that result in opposition, resentment, and anger, and result in poor interpersonal communication and understanding, which in most cases leads to poor task performance. In the healthcare setting, a relationship conflict between a physician and a nurse can have a negative impact on the quality of care provided to a patient. Conversely, the presence of low process conflict and low to average task conflict is often positive and fruitful. Process conflict must remain low to be functional and productive. If high, process conflict generates vagueness about the tasks to be performed and results in more time needed to finish work. In healthcare, clear delineation of clinical staff task responsibilities can reduce process and task conflict. Task conflict at low to average levels typically improves the work efforts of a group because it motivates members to talk about ideas and options that can improve the group's performance. An example is when the EHR implementation team, composed of the clinical staff and the health IT project manager, brainstorm and collaborate to find solutions to issues. Kolb and Bartunik present four basic types of conflict as yet another way to conceptualize and classify conflict. Their conceptualization includes the following types of conflict, goal conflict, cognitive conflict, affective conflict, and procedural conflict. These types of conflict can occur simultaneously and are not mutually exclusive. Let's explore these types of conflict further. In goal conflict, we see the incompatibility of two or more goals or outcomes. A health IT example might be when the medical practice has decided to purchase an EHR system. The physicians have been through the training on the new system and are ready to begin documenting. The vendor has strongly urged the practice to consider first turning on only the practice management portion of the software to ensure that the disruption to the accounts receivable days is minimized. The physicians are outraged. Why did they go to the trouble of being trained and reorganizing their workflow only to be trumped by the billing office? Why can't both documentation and billing be turned on at the same time? For that matter, why can't the billing office wait and let the physicians begin documenting first? This conflict highlights the conflicting goals of the different groups. Your role as a health IT professional will be to understand why both groups prefer a certain solution and to try to find a path that can address all valid concerns. The next type of conflict, cognitive conflict, includes conflict resulting from the incompatibility of thoughts and opinions within a person or among people. Take an example of a laboratory department that wants its own IT support for an internally developed tool that's customized to their environment and nuances. Corporate IT, on the other hand, wants a more formal model using a best-of-breed solution from an outside vendor for efficiency. This situation will create some cognitive dissonance between the two parties. As a health IT professional, you may be regarded with suspicion in this scenario by one or the other party. The third type, affective conflict, is the incompatibility of emotions or feelings within a person or among people. It's not uncommon in a health IT environment for some team members to have affective conflicts. Often, a person perceived as abrupt or short with the other team members can evoke emotional responses. For example, while implementing an emergency department tracking system, a particularly vocal physician decried everything to do with the system, including support staff who were there to help. One of the staff declared that she would rather quit than work with that physician ever again. To address this issue, the project manager had to assign someone else to manage that physician specifically and keep the emotionally injured staff member distant from that physician. The last type of conflict on this list procedural conflict, occurs when individuals differ over the procedure for resolving an issue or carrying out an assignment. An example would be when one team member immediately involves the team leader to resolve all disputes, whereas another prefers team members to resolve their own conflicts 
and wants the leader involved only if the team members can't agree. This concludes Lecture A, Definitions of Conflict. To summarize, conflict has been viewed in different ways since the early part of the 20th century. Conflict can be both a positive and negative force in team performance. And recognizing what type of conflict is in play in a particular situation can help you to better understand the dynamics involved and how to approach resolution.